Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your speaker, Chris McCann. If you'd like more information or to hear more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now, with your evening Bible study, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 30 of Revelation chapter 14, and we're continuing to look at verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. And again, of course, the big point is why here? Why in the midst of a discussion of Judgment Day does God emphasize uh, the way he is that this has to do with the patience of the saints and those that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus Christ? And the answer is because God's people will be on the earth in the day of judgment and presently are because now is judgment day and here during this time period, the people of God are exercising patience, patience. And uh, we, we have to be careful when we read a word like patience that we do not automatically uh, define it with our uh, common understanding or with our earthly understanding of of this word. Uh, For instance, if you're talking to anyone who doesn't really follow the Bible, know anything about the Bible, you you can mention patience. Oh, I have to be patient. And they're going to have an idea of what that word means, just as you will. And, and they're going to think, well, you have to wait until you, you get what you want or, or you have to wait while you put up with another person's attitude or uh, you, you need to be patient with someone because of the way they are. It, it, there's a lot of different uh, variations uh, uh, of understanding the word patient and people have their own ideas about that word. And that is not how we understand any biblical word. We have to let the Bible define it. And oftentimes God's definition is not the same definition as the world uh, would define the, uh, a particular word. And that's the case with patience. Here is the patience of the saints. Now the Greek word translated as patience is Strong's number 5281. It is hupomone. Hupomone. And it's a compound word. It's made up of two different Greek words, hupo, which is 5259, and mone, which is Strong's 3306. Hupo, I think, can be best understood as being under. Under. And monet is a word that's translated as abide, endure, continue. And I want to look at a few places where monet is used. And then we'll come back to our word. And I think we'll have a better understanding of what God is saying. In John chapter 8. In John 8 verse 31 It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my my disciples indeed. And the Greek word translated as continue is mone. If ye continue in my word, uh, uh, then you are my disciples. And isn't it interesting and significant that Jesus makes that kind of a statement. If you continue, why would he say that? Well, because the seed is sown on many hearts, and sometimes the seed is sown and there's no uh, depth of earth, and immediately uh, there is a reaction in people, a joyous reaction. And and, uh, this is often the case when you'll have people say, oh, that person's on fire for the Lord. I've actually met some people 
that this has been said of, and they're very excited, all uh, full of fervor, and, and they want to talk about the Bible uh, all day long, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. But, and I'm not saying that's the case with every person, but there are instances where this is just an initial, immediate reaction, and nothing has really happened deep down within. There's been no change of heart, and it's just an intellectual. Uh, it could be the way their personality is. They, they tend to go after things uh, with excitement initially. But then, because there's no um, deepness of earth and and the word of God could not take root, that is, Christ is not in them, who is the root and offspring of Jesse, there will be a falling away from that position they're in, or they'll never come to a right position of the gospel. What's it matter if you're excited about uh, erroneous doctrine? Uh, And there are people all excited about speaking in tongues. They're excited about falling over backwards, they're excited uh, about various aspects of the charismatic movement. They're excited about healings. They're, they're all excited about accepting Christ. They're excited about the wrong things. Then, and and that, that doesn't do anyone any good. The, the world gets excited uh, constantly over wrong things. They're, they're um, brought to an emotional high point often over the wrong things. And and the feeling, the emotion, the excitement means nothing. But there are instances where people get excited when they hear the true gospel. And yet again, there's been no change within and they they will leave that position. And, And so it's very important, as Jesus says, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And especially when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. Now we're going to find out. Do you, do you really have a change of heart? Are you a new creature? Are you one of God's elect? Has God saved you? This will become known Not in a day, not in a moment, not through a decision, not through um, a profession of faith, but through continuance, through an ongoing desire to do the will of God, to, to steadfastly maintain the truth of the word of God that you have been taught. That is continuing in the faith. That's why it, it, it's sorrowful and and very troubling when we know of people that have gone along maybe even for years and yet at a time of intense tribulation during the Great Tribulation period or persecution for the word's sake. And we'd have to say there was some of that after May 21, 2011, after the tribulation, there is a falling away. There There is a leaving of the faithful teachings of the Bible and they no longer want to be identified with the timeline. And they're, they're, well, it's about time to go back to church and and, uh, leave all these ideas about the end of the church age behind and so forth. And, And so they're not continuing in the faithful doctrine they have been taught that God has opened up in the time of the end, but they're returning back. That That's basically what the Bible means when it speaks of those that, that um, desire to go back to Egypt in their heart, and, and they want to make a captain over them as it actually happened historically and return to Egypt. It, it's what the Bible means when it says some have put their hands to the plow and then look back. It's, the, it's what the Bible means when God said, remember Lot's wife. And what was Lot's wife's transgression? She fled Sodom, but looked back behind him. And 
And God warns against that in, in a major way that we, we are not to look back, but we are to press toward, press forward toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We are to run the race that is set before us and not to turn back. And this is all summarized here in a sense. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So there's one use, uh, one place we find Monet. Another place is 2 John chapter 9. 2 John 9, and um, it's a little epistle. God moved the Apostle John to write. And God moved John to write um, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation. There's some doubt as to the author of the Gospel of John. It very well might have been Lazarus, but, but, but we know that God moved John to write Second John. And it says in verse 9, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not, and the word abideth is a translation of the Greek word mone, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Now, uh, the word abideth, we don't use that uh, too often in our modern uh, English language. Uh, there's that wonderful song, Abide in Me, and, and yes, we sing it, but sometimes we don't think about it. The, the word continue, the word continue is helpful. Because it's, it, it's the same Greek word. So we could read this. Whosoever transgresseth and continueth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that continueth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Continuing in the doctrine of Christ. Now what is the doctrine of Christ? The, the word translated as doctrine is translated one place, and this is in Titus 1 verse 9. I'm not going to turn there. I will say what it says. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Hath been taught is a translation of the word doctrine that we find here and elsewhere. Hath been taught. Doctrine is is that which we are taught from the Bible. We read the Bible. And, and of course, that's a very good thing, to read the Word of God. But God doesn't expect us to just read the Bible and come away with nothing. He doesn't expect us to be ignorant of His Word. As we read the Bible, we learn things. And, and this is the big mistake that people have made, especially lately, um, as they they don't trust any teachers, and that's nothing wrong with that. Neither do I, and and none of us should. God tells us to to make sure we check things out and to try the spirits, and and that's when because we don't trust any man, so we always want to check out what's being said against the Bible to see if it's true. But they carry it further than that, and, and they go further than God has gone. And in, in doing such, we'd have to say they're trying to be holier than God, because God hasn't commanded this. But they say there's not to be teachers anymore. We, we don't trust any men. There's not to be teachers, only the Bible. And so they post scripture. And oftentimes they try to teach through their posting of Scripture. And sometimes they may comment on it and, and go contrary to their own doctrine of no teaching. But they just post Scripture and let's let the Bible talk. Well, why has God given us the Scripture? It is, according to Second Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. What's it profitable for? Well, let, let me read it. Make sure I get it correct. 
2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. But they deny that. They say, oh no, all scripture, here it is. I'll, I'll post scripture. But, but don't dare try to understand doctrine. Don't dare try to say this is what a scripture means because then then you're you're presenting doctrine and they're going contrary to the bible in their denial that god has given us the scripture for the purpose of doctrine and so we can read for instance uh, that the bible says that god is the father that god is spirit that god is the son and we can put it all together and we can say the Bible teaches that, that God is one, yet God reveals himself as a triune uh, deity. He, he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, but one God. That's doctrine. And, and that's what God expects from the reader of the Bible, because that's one of the purposes. He gave all scripture. It's profitable for doctrine. And then God qualifies individuals in various aspects, some to teach, some to proclaim, and so forth, the doctrine that the Bible uh, puts forth. And as long as what we're saying is accurate and faithful to the Scripture, again, the example of the Trinity, or the example of the doctrine of election and salvation and how we become saved, not by man's faith, but by the faith of Christ. And and it's through reading the whole Bible and all the pertinent scripture on that particular teaching or doctrine that we then are able to see, well, this is what God has decreed. This is the teaching of God. And, and that's another reason God says comparing Scripture with Scripture. Then the Holy Ghost teaches. And remember, doctrine in Titus 1.9 is, is that which hath been taught. And as if we're following the methodology of the Bible, the Holy Ghost is the teacher that teaches us the doctrine of God. And that's the reason in 2 John 9, it says, Whosoever transgresseth and continueth not in the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine developed, the doctrine that is derived from Scripture and from comparing verses with verses here a little and there a little, we come to doctrine that God takes responsibility for the Holy Ghost teaches. And yet there's a need, there's a necessity to continue in the doctrine of Christ, the true and faithful teaching of the Bible. And the problem is, as, as we've seen, that it's not that the true and faithful teaching of the Bible doesn't get declared and doesn't get out there to people so that they can't hear it. Oh, they hear it all right. The people in the churches heard about the end of the church age. Those that hold the position of free will, they've heard about election. Those that say, oh, we're to worship on the seventh day Sabbath, they've heard that God made a change to Sunday Sabbath for the New Testament period and so forth. They heard and maybe even for a time they believed and continued in by uh, understanding and holding to this doctrine. But at some point, they change. At some point, something comes up and, and they no longer um, hold to that point. And, and it, it could be just um, a natural matter. Someone might believe Sunday is the Sabbath. We're not to do any work. Um, it's the Lord's day. It's not for our pleasure. And then their job makes a change and it's not an emergency type job like a doctor or a nurse or, or so forth. It's just a regular job. 
And the job says, well, we require you to come in on Sunday. And and now they they begin to look at things in a different light. And, and maybe a couple of years ago, you would have talked to them and they were in agreement. But now, after um, taking that step to, to work a little bit on Sunday, a couple of years later, I, I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe. See, they were tested on that point, failed the point, and no longer hold to it in, in order to justify their disobedience. Or there's someone, and and this is um, true of certain individuals I know, that that believed, yes, the Bible says there's not to be divorced for any reason. And I agree. I agree. The Bible teaches this. And, and they might have been a divorced person, and they continue uh, steadfastly with that doctrine uh, for maybe several years. But then they meet someone. They meet someone. They really like this person. They get along so well. And, and after uh, some time, they turn back to the Bible, and they start looking again at those scriptures. And, of course, there's always a verse or two that that seems to give the appearance of going another way. And and God has written the Bible that way to allow people to run with things, uh, to find their justification for their sin, and, and slowly but surely, finally they come up with a study of their own, and they say, you know, I don't think God would have a believer uh, deprive himself of marriage. And I've been looking at these verses, and I see that God does permit marriage after divorce. And they did not continue. They did not go on in that doctrine. And again, life circumstances, the cares of this world arise and choke the word. They're through circumstances and events that develop in the workplace, in their personal life. Or maybe it's something like uh, a major event, like May 21, 2011, was a major event the whole world took notice of. And they went out on a limb and they held to many doctrines with the understanding God had opened up the scriptures and they, they trusted the biblical calendar of history. But then when things did not work out as they had thought they would and and were told they would, well, it, it caused them to begin doubting the calendar, not because they've gone back to the Bible and, and found any fault, just uh, through their, their lack of seeing anything uh, take shape. It, it um, really is a result of the lack of them seeing with their eyes any judgment. And, and from there, they begin to doubt the end of the church age, even though they were firm, oh, they were absolute, they were convicted, the church age is over, and now a couple years after May 21, they're, they're posting um, notes from their church. They're, they're posting on Facebook or somewhere else, or if you talk to them, yeah, I went back to church, and, and I, I just don't see this end of the church age anymore. They did not continue in the word of God in the doctrine of Christ. And this is a terrible thing. Uh, uh, let me read this verse again. Second John 2, the second John 9. Whosoever transgresseth and continueth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that continueth in the doctrine of Christ, he is both the Father and and the Son. God does this repeatedly, time and again, and it could be with any doctrine. He will try us. He will test us. You say you believe it. All right. All right. Now, what if these circumstances develop and and you're put on the spot? Now, uh, you're, you're going to maybe suffer for the word's sake might even be tribulation or persecution that arises. You could suffer financially if you don't work on Sunday. You can suffer um, in your personal life if, if you let this girl go, even, even though 
Uh, the Bible would say you're not to be married again. You can't have a relationship because you're still married to your first wife. Yeah, but it, it's so lonely and and we're put on the spot. It, it's easy to hold a doctrine that's untried, that's just an intellectual exercise that, uh, yes, um, I believe that There'll be no salvation once May 21, 2011 comes and uh, because I think I'm going to be raptured. I'm going to be taken out of the world and and there'll be no salvation for those left behind. And yes, men, women, and children, and yes, babies would have been born during that time, but I hold to no salvation until, until God arranges things so that I am left in the earth, living in the world during that time, and it affects me personally and my family personally, and uh, it could be my children or my grandchildren or others I know, and I'm here, and now are you going to continue in the teaching of the Bible concerning those days after the tribulation? Oh, no, no, I don't believe that for a minute. Uh, Well, you believed it before when it didn't impact you, but God put you on the spot. And will you continue in his word? And many, many are not continuing in that doctrine and many other doctrines, which is a tragic thing. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies. You can hear these studies Monday through Friday over Pal Talk, Skype, eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over your phone. For more information or to hear other studies, visit www.ebiblefellowship.com. Until our next study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.